Here we go. So let's. Um, I just wanted to wanted us to look at uh, one Corinthians fourteen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, the exhortation um, based on the gifts of all the gifts, use of the gifts. Uh, what Paul says, first you love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Um, just wanted, to, wanted, to, wanted us to dwell on that first part. Uh, I know we have actually seen that second part over and over again and uh, emphasized uh, that um, in the right way. Right? Desiring spiritual gifts. So the first part, pursue love, pursuing love, um, pursuing love when when the other person is not really or whoever uh, with whom we need to express our love is not really um, it's not really convenient. Is in our minds we we kind of come to the conclusion that this person is not. Um, is not deserving of our love. Uh, does not deserve it. Does not. Uh, uh, it's not uh, in any way. Probably this person deserves uh, the, or quite the opposite of love, right? But here we see the exhortation: pursue love. Right? What well, we know that um, uh, pursuing this God kind of love, where Paul talks about. Uh, uh, this love in 1 Corinthians 13, the God kind of love. And um, so so obviously he's talking about agape. And he's saying, pursue agape, pursue the God kind of love and desire spiritual gifts. So may this be seen in, in our lives. Right? So, so the thing is, of course, uh, just wanted to lay that um, uh, the foundation that um, love is not... Um, you know, pleasing everybody, and at all times, love is not uh, withholding from speaking the truth. Love is love is not uh, you know bringing uh, not bringing correction. You know, and all that. So we we know it's the right uh, expression of love. You know, love does correct. Love does. Um, love is firm. Love speaks the truth, uh, and so on. So with all that, you know, what we see this kind of love that is embodied. In the person of, of our Lord Jesus, uh, so that's the kind of love that we are exhorted to pursue. You know, pursue this God kind of love, and so um, so for all of us, it's again a reminder today that to pursue that love, you know, in our pursuit of gifts, in our pursuit of uh, excellence, in our pursuit of uh, uh, in our pursuit of well, let's say ministry, sharing the gospel. Building or co-laboring with Christ to build the church, um, you know, in a pursuit of all that, uh, says pursue love, especially with the members in our own family, where there's a lot of familiarity, where um, we, you know, there's a every opportunity to take things for granted, right? Where our guards are down, there are no masks, right? So uh, even with at close quarters to pursue love, right? So, with that reminder, uh, let's get started. So, let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord, uh, for this exhortation that uh, you want us to pursue love, uh, go after, make sure that this is this God kind of love is expressed in and through our lives with everyone, Lord, and and the way you express that love and lord we we thank you that we have you as our role model we have you as our example and father god we pray that uh, uh, this god kind of love that you already poured out into our hearts by the holy spirit or as we read in romans 5 god we we pray that uh, this love is something that we will pursue and express and demonstrate lord uh, in and through our lives father god we thank you that um, that uh, this is available for us. Um, this is our portion because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we we position ourselves to to demonstrate the love that you already poured out into our hearts by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God. We thank you that you 
counted as worthy to be recipients, Lord, of such a great virtue, Lord, that just flows from you. That where scripture says, God is love. And so, God, something that is of you, you have put in us, oh God. We thank you for that. And uh, may we, uh, Lord, demonstrate this that you put in our hearts, God, something that is yours, God, um, to everyone around. We thank you. Um, for the possibility of being able to do that. And we give you all the praise and glory at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, morning, Lubega. Yeah. So, see you coming there. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's, get, um, and let's just continue from where we stopped um, last uh, class. Last class, we stopped at, uh, we just started with teamwork. And uh, we looked at uh, some of the uh, advantages of working in teams, and uh, definitely we see the, you know, uh, all the efforts uh, growing exponentially when we work as a team. And we looked at some of those things: the increased strength and increased accountability, and uh, something that uh, benefits the leader, uh, where the leader's potential is greatly enhanced, and uh, the 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 weaknesses of the leader are uh, balanced out by the strength of the team and so on, right? So um, so we were looking at some of the reasons as to why people still avoid uh, working in teams, because that needs to, that's, you know, that's a, uh, it's going to be a very intentional, deliberate uh, work, right? So like you can choose not to do it, right? So you can choose to just uh, be a solo, artist and you know do that it's uh, because uh, you, you feel that especially if you're a person who is uh, uh, who is skilled talented in you know in multi uh, you know faceted you know in in different areas and uh, you want to finish it finish things do things uh, sorry timely and uh, you know you you just think that okay maybe I'll just do it myself right Okay, so here are some uh, reasons. We were looking at some of the reasons. One was pride, and uh, and then we saw that uh, um, another one was um, yeah. Let me just share that um, insecurity, right? We said um, first one was pride, unwilling to admit that I can't do it myself. I can't do everything myself. Uh, unwilling to admit that there is someone who can actually do a better job at this than me. Right. So it could be pride, it could be insecurity as well, uh, because teamwork requires uh, recognizing the ability, recognizing the skill in others, <clears throat> and also uh, a sense of empowering. You know, with, with comes with delegation, with comes with uh, uh, the, the the authority that you share with the others to say, okay, you 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 can do this, um, uh, and so on. So. We see that <clears throat> um, if there is an unwillingness on our part, then or a kind of an insecurity, you know, what if they, um, you know, uh, what if if I empower them, what if they do better than me, right? So, what if they do better than me, or what if they replace me? You know, that's another that's another fear. So, I'd rather hold my cards you not know, close. I'd rather uh, do certain things myself, uh, maybe not really empower them, uh, which will which will benefit the team, right? Um, not really get them to do things that will um, uh, things that that they are capable of, or even you know better than me. So I'd I'd, I'd rather not do that because what if I get replaced? Right? There's a there's a fear, or it could be even you know being very naive thinking that um, the complexity and the and the uh, you know the difficulty of achieving certain tasks you know being naive and thinking that okay i can i can actually do it like i can actually do it there's only so much that you know we can carry right there are only so many so much of baggage or luggage that we can carry Right? There's only so much weight that as an individual can carry. Uh, while it could be it could be a lot compared to others, uh, if you're if you're an able, capable person, 
but there's there is still a limit right and uh, even if there are two people and you're able to sh share the load or carry then you're able to do much more right? uh, uh, maybe it's a little more than what you were able to do on your own so so having this uh, not having this understanding and, and being very naive thinking that well i can do it on my own now it could be that or it could be the it could be a a, a case of temperament or personality right uh, maybe a person is very reserved not very outgoing you know temperamentally uh, doesn't want to participate with others um, doesn't uh, really interact much with other people um, so you you know so that if that is a difficulty right if if that is a challenge um, just interacting uh, getting people to be part of something if that is a ta challenge then yes people do hold back from working in teams or you know another reason could be that uh, maybe there was a bad experience right uh, uh, maybe a bad experience of working in teams and it did not work out where people uh, for various reasons uh, you know, people did not really work together. It was a disaster, maybe. And so with that in mind, if it's still fresh, you know, every time you think about working at MC, this is still fresh in your memory, then uh, definitely you would, all that hurt and disappointment and everything is there. So you don't want to venture into working as a team, right? So uh, you just want to minimize that as much as possible and do everything on your own, right? So it could, it could be for, um, for all these various um, reasons that people don't work uh, in teams, maybe. Right? Um, while we uh, look uh, in, into scripture, we see that there are many themes or teamwork that we see um, in scripture itself. Now, while we, uh, you know, uh, in an earlier chapter, we saw that uh, well, the Lord Jesus sending out the twelve, sending out the you know, this, the 70, and, and he sent them out two by two. Right? He sent them out two by two um, uh, it, uh, to the places where he was himself was about to go. So he, he gave them a commission. He gave them, he sent them out two by two. So he sent them out in teams of two. Right? And uh, we see the teams becoming increasingly, um, well, increasing. Uh, with, with, it's, it was not just two people, but um, composed of uh, many others. As we read through the epistles, right? as we read through the book of Acts, um, in Paul's uh, missionary journeys, and we see different themes uh, and ethnically different themes as well. Right? We, we we see that, and when we read Romans 16, we read about the kind of people whom um, Paul partnered with. Right uh, now, we don't know, know the the timeline, as in you know how long did they work as teams, but. Um, but we see that uh, they uh, they were working together, and especially if you read through to the end of the chapter, and uh, this is verse 21, where Paul says, "Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, and Sosi Peter, my countrymen, greet you." Okay, so they were with him even as this epistle was written, right? Timothy, uh, Lucius, Jason, Sosi Peter, so that, that is four guys, and then. Verse 22 says, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. So he was the one who was a scribe, right? He was, I mean, as in when Paul was, Apostle Paul was dictating it verbally, he was the one who actually you know, wrote it down, penned it down. So, um, so that's um, uh, Tertius. And then uh, Gaius, the host, uh, is mentioned in verse 23, the host of the whole church. So he's there. Then Erastus, the treasurer of the city, he is their quarters, a brother. So you see all these kind of, so we see four plus one, five plus six, uh, seven and eight, at least eight people. And in addition, uh, you know, to Paul. So we see Paul, so that, that whole team, uh, which is mentioned there, uh, verses 21 and 24, 23, uh, is about nine people. Okay, so working together uh, closely. And uh, the goal of chapter 16 in, in Romans um, is talks about the different people. Priscilla, Akila mentioned there, 
um, Phoebe's mentioned the Epirators, uh, Andronicus Jr. You know, so many people are listed there. So Paul was not um, afraid of working with teams, and we see that it is, um, you know, the, the kind of things that he did, uh, the, kind, the kind of things that God accomplished through him. Uh, it was not without teams. You know, that's that's an eye opener for us. That uh, you know, yes, we, we we all know that God raises up a man calls a person a person commissions gives a vision etc but the whole thing is accomplished uh, as a body as a team right um so we uh, we see that um and then we can also look at um um we, we back up to i think romans 12 um <clears throat> verse 4 says we have as we have many members in one body Okay. In one body, we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So, <clears throat> sim similarly, I'm sorry. Similarly, in a team, like we have uh, multi-functional, multi-skilled people, and uh, not everyone has the same same level of skill. Maybe not everyone has the same kind of function, but um, we have this, you know, wonderful dynamic, um, you know, uh, team. And they're able to accomplish, right? So, um, or we have many members, as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. Verse five. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Right. Um, so that that is something that we see. One Corinthians twelve verses twelve to twenty seven. Again, talks about the. The human body and the parallel uh, of that with that of the body of Christ, where uh, we are, where we where we <clears throat> cannot look down in compare comparing, uh, where we cannot look down on ourselves and disqualify ourselves from being part of the team, or look down on others and disqualify them being part of the team. And uh, the the wonderful thing is, we supply strength where there is lacking, and we receive strength where we are lacking. Right. So that is what we see in 1 Corinthians 12. So, so, um, so some questions to ask ourselves if we are very hesitant uh, about working in teams. Okay. So the question is, on the same lines uh, of the reasons why people do not um, you know, work in teams, is it, is it pride? You know, am I unwilling to admit that I can't do everything? Am I unwilling to admit that there are others who are who can do a better job at this and other things um, than what I can do? Am I unwilling to admit that, right? Acknowledge that, and uh, and and that's going to be pride, or is it insecurity? Am I unwilling to empower others? Uh, empowering could be simple permission to work in a certain area. When you know, when you see that the person is capable, responsible, accountable, trustworthy, and still there is hesitancy on our part, you know, to hold back uh, in in taking that in taking that kind of risk to um, allow the person to work, and maybe it's the outcome is um, you know pretty cr critical. Uh, if outcome is uh, outcome of not doing that could be be critical and so on so um you know why am i holding back why am i unwilling okay. uh, is it uh, you know am i using discernment or is it really suspicion is it discernment or is it you know insecurity right um and do i desire to maintain control over everything um yeah adivya you have a question go for it Sorry, Pastor, that was my mistake. Okay, okay. No problem, no problem. Okay, so any any questions here? Um, anyone, anyone else? Um, okay, uh, but these are, you know, these are, these are, I mean, these these, uh, these aspects that we are looking at, uh, these are quite real, you know, why people do not work in teams, and it's, it's very possible right, um, that we, uh, we might actually hesitate um, to uh, personally, you know, I, I've had this experience of uh, if, of teams uh, turning out badly, right? Working teams that 
uh, the the dynamics of the team was terrible and uh, very difficult people and uh, um, and continually while the while everyone was very highly skilled and temperamentally so vastly different and difficult to engage with and so on so uh, you know having had first hand experience of that so it's it's so if one goes through that for maybe a you know extended period of time it's it's only natural uh, to have that kind of a mindset right to to be insecure and say uh, so so we need to really face that ourselves uh, even before we you know look to others or look to leading others uh, in the team um to to look at that you know to am i unwilling uh, for whatever reason um okay then the question other question do i desire to maintain control am i una unable to trust others well, that's another thing trust is broken many times and it's showing the you know, the team in a bad light it is showing you as a leader in a in a bad light you know and so uh it becomes very, very uh, crucial uh, that, well, yeah, just uh, this needs to change. This needs to, uh, this cannot continue. So, you know, so uh, is is that one of the reasons that uh, we're unwilling to, um, unwilling to kind of uh, um, be part of the team or, or unwilling to work in a team? right so uh, so these are some things for us to ask again for estimation you know that's the thing estimation of time unrealistic estimation of uh, what the project or what a task would um, require you know we always do that you know we i mean all of us are capable of doing that we look at something and say okay this I'm, i can do this i can do this in let's say two hours and then we realize that it takes twice that amount of time right? we underestimated uh, the magnitude of the task or the kind of or the complexity of the project of the task right and um, you know some and, and i think we you know sometimes do that with uh, with distance right reaching a particular place and we uh, we show up late because we underestimated a lot of things the distance maybe and the traffic um, uh, and so we underestimated you know so it was a wrong estimation and when we realized that oh you know there's so many things there, there's so much of traffic there's so many uh, you know, so many things to uh, before we reach so a poor estimation is also uh, something so we need to ask ourselves am i estimating the task realistically um, and why am i not you know, involving a team right? and temperamentally temperamentally you know this is a very real thing because uh, not everyone feels comfortable working with others and this is something that uh, if temperamentally we we are you know kind of reserved uh, we may not be you know uh, being introverted or reserved is not a negative thing you know, it's it's actually many people look at it that way, right? Uh, extroverted means successful. Extroverted means uh, you know uh, you are well the life of the party, you know, kind of thing. So uh, you know it's all the positives, and then being introverted is negative. You know, it's like uh, and everybody tells you know the kind of reserved person, you know, you need to get out of that shell. You need to you know do that, and you need to. Um, uh, kind of encouraging that person to get out of that uh, thing so well, being introvert or being reserved to some extent is good because um you know the person is actually uh, well has deeper thoughts uh, is able to analyze things uh, at a deeper level maybe maybe creatively that person is so much uh, better uh, processing things on their own and all all those good things are there so it's not necessarily a negative thing to be reserved or to be introverted. But along with that, if we have this skill, right? Uh, if if me being reserved or on my own to do certain things or to um, to analyze and solve, if it is hindering me from 
being part of a team or leading a team or involving a team, then that becomes a negative, right? Okay, fine. So uh, temperament uh, and, and other things. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so some interesting quotes about teams. Uh, Michael Jordan, the, the basketball player, uh, this is what he says, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence win championships, right? Where it really matters, uh, the big one. So to, uh, to win a championship, you need to be consistent and win the games. And uh, it takes so much more like endurance uh, to win the big games. Uh, so teamwork and intelligence win championships, right? Um, Steve Jobs is said to have uh, quoted this, great things in business are never done by one person. They are done by a team of people. And John C. Maxwell's uh, quote, Teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. But a vision becomes a nightmare when the leader has a big dream and a bad team. Okay, so uh, it is teamwork that carries out the vision. The bigger the vision, uh, the more uh, you know, uh, the, the better the team, uh, and uh, and uh, with a good team, then the vision is accomplished. Okay, so let's look at a, a, a you know a checklist. You know, if it's a, if there is a checklist that we can go through uh, for a team, you know, for people in a team or to work um, work leading at work at leading a team. You know, if we are there as a team leader like here are some very basic simple things that one has to uh, uh, one has to uh, put in place or one has to make sure that uh, these things are just much like uh, uh, an uh, you know a pilot who would uh, who would you know fly the plane and he has a checklist and uh, this is something that he needs to make sure as a routine to make sure that the you know uh, he might be the most experienced of pilots, but here here are some things that he needs to you know here are the switches that need to be on. There are three things that need to be off. These are you know all the mechanics of it. Uh, he needs to go through that over and over and over again. And every time he sits in that cock cockpit, he needs to do that. So uh, here this is a checklist which is which is simple at the same time important for us as leaders and team. Okay. So the first one is this. It's about the big picture. It's about the vision. You know, we talked about it earlier, the importance of that. So does everyone in the team what is the vision? know what is the vision of the team? Right? Does everyone in the team know that? Or are we assuming that everybody knows it? Right? Or every, does are we assuming that um, well, this is the, that everybody in the team, those who join newly, are we somehow assuming that they will anyway know it? Why? Because they've been in the team for many years, uh, or they've joined recently. I'm sure the others would have told them, uh, you know, can't they not know why, why we are doing this? Well, we cannot assume. Right? People can have a version of the vision which may not be accurate. Right? People may have. Um, well, an incomplete picture, right? or even sometimes or distorted picture. You know, I'm not saying that they might, they will not have a picture or the accurate picture of what what we are uh, about and what we are setting out to accomplish. Uh, they might, but the thing is, when we assume that, then we're making a mistake. So, so the question to ask is: Does everyone in my team know what the big picture is? why we are doing what we are doing what is it that we are uh, about right what is this church about what is this the functioning of this team about you know it could be a it could be a simple function like uh, you know maybe if you take a local church right it could be a simple um, task of ushering maybe you know it's not a simple task but then again it's it's a demanding task you know the it depends on the size of the church and so on. So I mean, it could be a task like ushering. It could be something well, something to do with audio. It could be something to do with maybe prayer ministry. So does everyone know the vision, right? Vision, overall vision, and also the vision of this particular team. Because if everyone comes in with a different vision, then we are going to be you know, pulling 
or going in different directions. So very important. Okay. Second question is, does everyone not only knows, but have they bought into it? In the sense, is it theirs? Right. That's a, that's a, again, an important question. Right. Okay. I, I know it mentally. I know it. But is it mine? Are you in agreement with it? Right? Are you, uh, do you own it? In the sense, yes, this is, this is something I believe in. And this is something that I, I, I wholeheartedly want to go after. Right? So the question is, uh, you know, do they own the vision? Do they own the big picture? Does everyone, everyone in the team? Right? So, uh, like, um, um, uh, you know, one of the pastors, uh, one of those pastors of those big churches. Uh, um, so he makes this uh, in he makes a statement in this leadership conference. He talks about how vision leaks. Right? It's like putting uh, filling a bucket with tiny holes with water. Right? It has tiny holes, but you fill that bucket, and you see that during the course of time the bucket will become empty because it has tiny leaks in it. So uh, the thing is that um, when we are doing life, when we are going about our tasks, and when we focus on the small things, it is possible that we lose the big picture. Okay, Why we are doing these small things and why? Because all our energy, all our everything is you know, just focused on getting that task done and uh, you know all the intricacies of it we just you know focused on getting some skill levels up and uh, you know and finishing it and doing it uh, uh, and it has to be done well and so on so sometimes we get so involved in that and we forget the big picture right so the vision has to be reiterated the bucket has to be filled refilled rather and uh, we realize that uh, you know the, the okay this is what i'm doing but what is the goal right why am i doing this um, that is very very important so so which means that for the team or uh, as a person who's leading the team i need to ensure this happens and it it, not, it need not be done in a boring manner it need not be do, run in a routine manic mechanical manner but it can be done creatively Right. Um, we can we can do it as a quiz. We can do it as a as an activity. We can do it as a as a you know in whatever way, right? Possible to reiterate the big picture, right? And uh, and that's very important. That's the first thing that's very important. The big picture. The second one is a placement. Okay. So what are we saying when we say placement? You know, is everyone in the team the right person? Um, doing the right thing. Okay. So, I don't know it, it goes back to uh, the selection of people. It goes back to, um, you know, uh, well, assigning tasks to people. Uh, it goes back to all that, right? And of course, if you are handed a team which is already there, then, uh, well, you have so much more less control over those factors right of selection and uh, and so on so but we can definitely uh, readjust realign things within okay so uh, so the thing is is the right person in the right place at the right time doing the right thing okay so within the team because um, as john c maxwell puts it you know if the wrong person is there in the wrong place then there is regression meaning the whole team is pulled back we are instead of moving forward we are moving back and just imagine if every person is the team is like that right it's a bad fit okay uh, i remember at one of the conferences um, we uh, uh, as musicians like we were uh, we were short of uh, you know, musicians and short of uh, for the worship team actually short of others uh, playing so we had to make do with whoever was there so there were i think three of us so uh, since one person was leading all of us were doing things that that was not our strength right so i was playing an instrument which was so i was not really it was not my instrument and another person was playing an instrument which was which was we were comfortable with but it was not our 
you know it was it was not our best and we were not completely uh, uh, we were not good at it to that extent so so we were doing that and and uh, so you know if if that is the case with uh, uh, let's say if the person is not good at it and the person is there stuck with that role um, and we don't even realize it and so that's going to take the team in the opposite direction instead of moving towards the goal everyone is moving backwards right and they're wondering you know why is it why are we not moving forward why are we not even in that same not even able to maintain status quo but we are you know we are actually going back it's because we have wrong people in the wrong place okay wrong people you know in the wrong place maybe that person is not skilled maybe that person is uh, does not have the uh, you know the the ability the mindset everything but we have actually put that person there right and uh, for whatever reason maybe we just thought that okay they 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 were enthusiastic and then we, we said okay and then it's killing the whole thing right um the wrong person in the right place you know there is <clears throat> when we say right place it's like okay this is a this is a, this is a place of need this is a place of uh, where um well, there is uh, there will be fruitfulness. The need is an area you know, which is there, but we put the wrong person, right? And so uh, then there is a lot of frustration. Right? There's a lot of frustration on part of that person individually. You know? um, so for that person, it is it is not the level of comfort. It is not the uh, not the thing that they are they are called to do their calling is something else and there's um, this frustration there, right the third thing you know it could be the right person in the sense in terms of um, attitude in terms of heart in terms of um, you know ability you know is the right person but they are actually doing the wrong thing right the right person for the team the right person uh, individually you look at the person and then they are well it's, they're, they're, they're the right person. They have everything that is required, um, but it is the wrong placement. You know, that is not the area for which uh, they're there. What they were meant to do. Okay, so um, then it could be the right person in the right place, and then there is uh, there is progression. You know, if the right person in the wrong place, then there is a bit of confusion happening. Right person in the right place, then there is progression. There is advancement. Right. There's movement. Um, and then if you have all the right people, you know, we're talking about team, if you have all the right people in the right places doing their thing, then we have multiplication. In the sense, there is growth, there is expansion, there is momentum, and uh, things are happening. Okay. So uh, something to keep in mind, the placement. Okay. Are they... Uh, I know that we, we you know we, we know that we have a need, but is this the right person? It's, it's better that uh, you know even if you know if, if there is a need and even if um, well somebody is there saying I can do I I am available, but if you if you you know for sure that that is not the right person for that particular task, it's better not to you know put that person there, right? Okay, then the third one is attitude. Okay, now attitude again, a mindset, a predisposition uh, for a particular, for the whole, you know, the, for maybe for the task, maybe for the activity, maybe for whatever the group has come come together to have, uh, you know, the right attitude, to have a good attitude. It really matters. Okay, uh, so good attitude among the team members, it does not guarantee a team success. But if it's a bad attitude, you can be sure that it'll guarantee the failure of the team. Okay, if not today, then definitely tomorrow, right? So uh, uh, the attitude, the predisposition, or the mindset for uh, of a person, you know, the thing is, the attitude is very contagious. You know? It's very intangible, but it's it's very contagious. And it's how you go about doing a particular task, right? How you face difficulties in while doing the particular task. Okay. So here is this formula, a bunch of you know equations that you can look at 
again, John C. Maxwell mentions this, that great talent but rotten attitudes is a bad team. So it will be highly skilled, highly skilled team. But if they have a rotten attitude, a rotten attitude is an attitude that you cannot, you know, cannot um, even uh, stand, right? Um, then it is, it, you can guarantee that it's a bad team, right? This team needs change. They have skill, uh, but the attitude is bad. Okay, so if it's great talent and bad attitude, then it's an average team. And it's not like a rotten attitude, uh, but it's a bad attitude. Okay, we're going to look at some of these examples of attitudes. Right? So if it's a great talent and average attitude, then it's a good team. But if it's great talent and good attitude, then it results in a great team. So so the some of these attitudes, um, you know, attitude is not a bad word. Attitude is you can have a good attitude. Uh, but normally, we say that person has attitude. We normally refer to refer to a bad attitude, right? So, well, example is, okay, this team cannot function without me. If somebody walks in like that, right? I'm, I'm indispensable to this team, right? So that person, if, I, if that person has that attitude, what is the danger? You know, that person is going to look down on others. That person is going to, well, bend the rules a bit. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe if the, everyone, everyone, it's not a level playing field, right? If everyone is required to be, at a certain time, well, this person might show up late. Why, you know, they can't do without me. If everyone is supposed to uh, do things before they come, you know, and this person says, okay, just skips over that and then shows up, uh, why? Well, obviously, this team needs me. They can't do without me. So uh, I'm, a, you know, that person takes certain advantages. Well, another attitude could be, I'm the one, only one who's actually contributing to this team. I'm the one who's doing it. Nobody's, you know, none of the others. Um, the others are not actually contributing. Again, a bad attitude. So uh, I'm the top performer, so I'm about above the rules, above the office rules, above the team rules. Um, these rules don't apply for me because I am the top performer. Uh, the thing is that, if we as team leaders, if we actually reward this attitude, you know, if we overlook this attitude, or even you know, reward this attitude, reward this attitude meaning that you actually compliment the person while not um, you know not calling that out, you know, this kind of attitude in a person while not calling it out. If you actually, well, if you actually compliment and reward say nice things about how what a great job they've done to be an actually further uh, uh, strengthening this attitude in that person right Un unknowingly we are actually doing that we are rewarding that attitude we are rewarding and strengthening so that person will again repeat it Right. When we reward that behavior or when we reward that uh, attitude, you can be sure that that person will repeat the attitude and repeat the behavior, right? So uh, so these are bad attitudes. While a person can be highly skilled, right? Um, so, uh, so as team leaders, um, you know, this is the mistake sometimes we make. We look at the skill and we look at the need of the team. We know that this skill is required. Now, this skill, a person with this skill can actually be the game changer. Right? We can do so much more. You know, we can we can get things done in ministry. All the things that we've been planning to do, and uh, well, maybe this is the person God has sent, and you know, is a God sent. So uh, we we tend to overlook these things, right? And uh, maybe even reward that, and then we realize we have a bigger problem on our hands right so well the thing is to ensure that there's a um, good attitude you know for example uh, you know when it comes to the worship team um just pulling out that example um you know we decided that we will have this aud audition process okay so people have to uh, come 
and audition for the team well first of all of course they need to be believers they need to have the right so we kind of screen that right okay so are you a believer are you a you know are you a, a disciple of the lord are you a follower um and uh, you know what are those things that you uh, why are you doing it right so those are some questions um, that are there you know why do you want to serve right uh, why do you want to serve well i have these talents and i want to you know serve god with it and you know people have different responses so we go through it and see why does this person actually want to serve right and has the person been already serving right um well there could be a reason why they are not serving already and then if you know there could be some genuine reasons okay the schedule doesn't permit and whatever but if the person has been there for some time and well there's no reasons why you know, and they're not serving in other areas then there's a then there's a flag right so you need to check why is the person not um why are they wanting to serve in a very visible ministry and not in a invisible in the sense where you where your tasks and everything you know they they might go unrecognized but so you know the heart of why they want to serve right so that's the thing so we find that out then the thing is that okay uh, what about your abilities you know your it is your gifting that has positioned you to serve in a particular area right so do you have that so to be able to check that test that out now what if we know for sure that this person is well very skilled and has been serving in maybe another church another ministry for n number of years would we still take them through the audition process um, so the thing is we decided yes we will do that you know, so the audition process the audition um, you know orientation and all that orientation meaning that person comes for the practice comes prepared for the practice uh, for about 6 weeks or so you know but still doesn't play with the team on a sunday morning so that orientation period you know said okay let's do that so um, irrespective of you know how old the person how experienced the person or how skilled the person we need to do that so that actually helps set the right attitude you know it's, it's not a full proof thing well people can still go through that and then but but actually you get to see you know if people say i'm i'm you know i'm too big for this you know i'm too big for this i don't think i can then you know i don't think i can do this i don't think i want to do this you know do you know who i am you are incapable of i don't want to you know then you know the attitude is not right and it's going to pull the thing further down team right okay so let's uh, we'll stop here and then we'll we'll come back right thank you